Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will write a program and use the account class. And here's the program. I want you to create an array list of accounts and after that, display the number of deposits and withdrawals of each account. And notice that you can put as many accounts as you want inside this array list. In order to be able to solve this exercise, you shouldn't be afraid to make some changes to the classes. You might need to change the account and transaction classes, all right? What's important is that all the attributes should remain private. Now pause the video and try to solve this program. So the idea behind this exercise is that we don't have access to the transactions array list of the account, right? So we have to modify the account class. For example, we can write a method that returns the count of the transactions. So let's go to IntelliJ. Let's get started by creating the accounts array list. So we want an array list. Each item is an account and let's call it accounts and instantiated. So new array list. Now let's add two accounts to this array list. Now, as you know, each account needs a client. So let's create a client, client, and instantiate it. So new client. And over here, we need to pass the ID, the name, and the phone. Let's say the ID is 100, the name is Ali, and the phone number is anything. After that, we can create accounts and add them to the accounts array list. So let's say accounts.add, and over here, we will create some accounts. So each account needs an ID, balance, annual interest rate, and the client. Let's say the first account ID is 1, balance is 1000, annual interest rate 1.5, and finally the client is the variable client. We will do the same thing with the second account. Let's change the numbers, let's say 2.5, 2000, and the ID is 2. Of course, you can add as many accounts as you want. Now, how can we count the number of transactions, deposits, and withdrawals? In order to do that, we need access to the transactions array list because we want to iterate over it, right? But as you know, we didn't create a getter for the transactions array list. The only place we have access to the transactions array list is inside the account class. So inside this class, we need to write a method to iterate over this array list and count the withdrawals that we want. And this method will be a public method so that we can use it in other classes. So let's implement this method over here. First of all, it is a public method. It returns an integer, which is the count. And let's call it count transactions. And let's give it the type of the transactions that we want to count. And inside this method, we can iterate over the transactions array list and return the count. Okay. So over here, we can use a for each loop. So for each transaction, and let's call it transaction, inside the transactions array list, we want to test if the type of the current transaction is equal to the type that we got in the parameter. But as you know, we don't have getters inside the transaction class. So we cannot get the type. So let's go to the transaction class and add a getter for the type. So below the constructor, I'm going to add a getter for the type attribute. Perfect. Now inside the account class, we can use the getType method. So we will get the type and then we will compare the type of this transaction with the type that we got in the parameter. If the condition is true, this means that we want to increase the count. So let's create a variable count over here and it starts from zero. And inside the if statement, we will increase the count. So count plus plus. And this is it. After we exit the loop, we will have the count inside the variable count. So let's return count. All right. Now let me remove this empty line and this is it. Now let's return to the main class. And over here, now we can use the count transaction method. So let's iterate over the array list of accounts. Let's say four. So we have an account, let's call it account, inside our accounts array list. For each account, let's print the ID of the account. So let's say print, and let's say account, and concatenate the ID. So account.getID, and after that, let's concatenate a column, like this. After that, we will print the number of withdrawals and deposits. So let's print the letter W for withdrawals, put a column, and after that, let's use the method. So we'll say account.countTransactions, and we want to count the withdrawals. And we will do the same thing with the deposits. So we want to count the deposits. And over here, we will print the letter D. Beautiful. So now for each account, we are printing the ID of the account, the number of withdrawals, and the number of deposits. Beautiful. Let's run the program. Currently, this is the number of withdrawals and deposits for each account. And this is correct. So let's make some transactions. First of all, I will get the first account. So accounts.get0. And let's make a withdrawal, for example. First of all, I will make a withdrawal of 2000. And of course, this over here should not be possible because we don't have enough balance. We only have 1000 inside the first account. And after that, I will make a withdrawal of 1000. So this withdrawal should be okay. Now the number of withdrawals is equal to one. After that, I'm going to perform a deposit. So let's use the deposit method. 
and let's deposit 2000 and after that I will withdraw 1000 so use the withdraw method so now the number of withdrawals for the first account should be 2 and the deposits should be 1 now let's perform some transactions for the second account so let's get it accounts.get1 and after that let's make a deposit of 100 then a deposit of 300 for example we will not perform any withdrawals so the number of withdrawals for the second account should be 0 and deposits should be 2 so run the program and as you can see this is our result and it is correct so the idea behind this exercise is to modify these classes according to our needs now there is one more thing I want to talk about let me remove this for loop and let's print an account for example in this case I will print the first account so accounts.get0 run the program and as you see this is the string representation for our account let's modify the string representation to include a string representation of all the transactions in this account how about you try to do that pause the video and do it okay so I hope you are done as you know this string representation comes from the toString method in the account class so let's go there and over here in the toString method we want to concatenate a string representation for all the transactions so simply let's concatenate a backslash n in order to get to a new line and after that I will concatenate the transactions array list so over here we will get a string representation for the array list which is two brackets and inside the brackets we will have a string representation for each element in the array list and as you know the array list is an array list of transactions but inside the transaction class we don't have a toString method so let's run the program and now as you can see this account has this array list of transactions and inside it we have three transactions and this over here for example is the toString representation of the first transaction so let's implement a toString method in the transaction class in order to change the string representation and to do that I'm going to use the help of IntelliJ and as you can see we have to string so choose it and over here I will choose all the fields so press enter and have a look IntelliJ generates this to string method as you can see it returns a string representation of all the attributes of course we can choose whatever attributes we want but in this case we chose all the attributes and as you can see IntelliJ automatically adds this annotation I will remove it so don't worry about it so now over here we will get a string representation for the transaction using this to string method so let's run the program again and now have a look this account has an array list of transactions and for example this is the first transaction okay and this is it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video